welcome back to our YouTube channel, Dr. Meju. Uh, today we are here at uh, Research Center of Gynecology Department. So today we will be doing several surgeries and uh, hysteroscopy and gastroscopy. So for today's our first task is hysteroscopy. So let's start. So guys, before starting the procedure, as we know that general anesthesia is introduced into the body for the anesthetic purpose and in this procedure you are awake with this type of anesthetic but feels no discomfort. Hysteroscopy is used to diagnose or treat problems of the uterus. Hysteroscopy is a thin, lighted telescope-like device. It is inserted through your vagina into your uterus. The hysteroscope transmits the image of your uterus into a screen. Other instruments are also used along with the hysteroscope for the treatment. Hysteroscopy procedure is best carried out when the endometrium is relatively thin. So guys, that is after a menstruation. Both diagnostic and simple operative hysteroscopy can be carried out in a clinical setting on a suitably selected patients. Local anesthesia can be generally used and analgesics are not always necessary. A paracervical block may be achieved using a lidocaine injection in the upper part of the cervix. Hysteroscopic intervention can also be done under general anesthesia endotracheal or laryngeal mask or monitored anesthesia care as in this surgery we are seeing it. Prophylactic antibiotics are not always necessary. The patient is in a lithotomy position during the procedure as we can see. The procedure starts with the cervical dilatation. The diameter of the modern hysteroscope is generally small enough to conventionally pass through the service directly. For a proportion of women, cervical dilatation may need to be performed prior to insertion. Cervical dilatation can be performed by temporarily stretching the cervix with a series of dilators of increasing diameter. As we can see, the nurse is continuously repeating the dilatators with the increasing diameters. If the woman is in premenstrual stage, the mesoprostol prior to hysteroscopy for cervical dilatation appears to facilitate an easier and uncomplicated procedures. Then the hysteroscope with its sheath is inserted transvaginally guided into the uterine cavity. The cavity is insufflated and inspection is performed. As the uterine cavity is a potential cavity and needs to be distended to allow for inspection, thus during hysteroscopy either fluids or CO2 gas is introduced to expand the cavity. The choice is dependent on the procedure, the patient's condition and the physician's pre preference. Fluids can also be used for both diagnostic and operative procedures. However, CO2 gas doesn't allow the clearing of blood and endometrial debris during the procedure, which could make the imaging visualization difficult. Gas embolism may also arise as a complication. Since the success of procedure is totally dependent on the quality of high resolution video images in front of the surgeon's eye, CO2 gas is not commonly used as the distension medium. Electrolytic solutions include normal saline and the lactate ringer solution which are generally used. Current recommendation is to use the electrolytic fluids in diagnostic cases and in operative cases in which mechanical, laser or bipolar energy is used. As we know that hysteroscopy is useful in number of uterine conditions. So there are several indications for the hysteroscopy like Asserman syndrome in which hysteroscopic adenolysis is the technique of lysing adhesions in the uterus using either micro scissors or thermal energy modalities. Hysteroscopy can be used in conjunction with the laparoscopy or other methods to reduce the risk of perforation during the procedure. In the case of endometrial polyps, abnormal uterine bleeding, adenomyosis, endometrial ablation, myomectomy for the uterine folds, congenital uterine malformations, evacuations of the retained products of conception in selected cases, and the removal of embedded IODs. Guys, the use of hysteroscopy in endometrial cancer is not established as there is a concern that cancer cell could be spread into the peritoneal cavity. Hysteroscopy has the benefit of allowing direct visualization of the uterus, thereby avoiding or reducing iatrogenic trauma to delicate reproductive tissue which may result in Asserman syndrome. Hysteroscopy allows access to the uterotubal junction for entry into the fallopian tubes. This is useful for the tubal occlusion procedure for the sterilization and phalanoscopy. While performing the hysteroscopy, guys, there can be several complications. A possible problem is uterine perforation when either the hysteroscope itself or one of its operative instrument breaches the wall of the uterus. This can lead to bleeding and damage to other organs. If other organs such as bowel are injured during a perforation, the resulting peritonitis can be fatal also. Furthermore, 
सर्वाइकल लेकरेशन इंटाइन इन्फेक्शन स्पेशली इन प्रोलॉन्ग प्रोसीजर इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड लेजर इंजरीज एंड कॉम्प्लिकेशन कोज बाय द डिस्टेंसन मीडिया कैन बी एनकाउंटर्ड द यूज ऑफ इनसेफलेशन ऑल्सो कोल्ड एज डिस्टेंडिंग मीडिया कैन लीड टू सीरियस एंड इवन फैटल कॉम्प्लिकेशन ड्यू टू एम्बोलिज्म और फ्लूड ओवरलोड विद इलेक्ट्रोलाइट इम्बेलेंसीज पर्टिकुलरली द इलेक्ट्रोलाइट फ्री इंसफलेशन मीडिया इंक्रीज द रिस्क ऑफ फ्लूड ओवरलोड विद इलेक्ट्रोलाइट इम्बेलेंसीज पर्टिकुलरली हाइपोनेट्रीमिया हार्ट फेलियर एज वेल एज पलमोनरी एंड सेरिब्रल एडिमा द मेन फैक्टर्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू फ्लूड ओवरलोड इन स्टेरोस्कोपिक्स आर मेनली हाइड्रोस्टेटिक प्रेसर ऑफ द इंसफलेशन मीडिया अमाउंट ऑफ एक्सपोज ब्लड वेसल्स सच एज बींग इंक्रीज इन एंडोमेट्रियल एबलेशन एंड मायोमेक्टोमी एंड अनदर वन इज द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ स्टेरोस्कोपी प्रोसीजर Women in fertile age are at increased risk of resultant hyponatremic encephalopathy likely because of increased level of estrogen. The overall complication rate for diagnostic and operative hysteroscopy was just 2% with serious complications occurring in less than 1% of cases using older methods. Morselation has fewer complications than electrocautery less than 0.1%. While doing the hysteroscopy we found that In most of the women they have the normal uterine cavities the most common abnormal hysteroscopic findings were the endometrial polyps and the submucous fibroids other findings are such as atrophy hyperplasia and cancer another reason for which patient come to the hysteroscopy department is abnormal uterine bleeding which is a common problem and remains an important reason for referral in general gynecological practice hysteroscopy is a superior technique for investing aub with high sensitivity and specific as intracavity lesions can be detected under direct view hysteroscopic findings can be normal also normal hysteroscopic findings includes a normal and non vascular smooth level abnormal findings includes polyps submucosal myomas endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer hyperplasic endometrium was defined as the endometrium that was highly vascular thick and polypoid in the appearance a hysteroscopy can also be used to investigate symptoms or problems such as heavy periods unusual vaginal bleeding postmenopausal bleeding pelvic pain repeated miscarriages or difficulty in getting pregnant The most common diagnostic condition for hysteroscopy are such as fibroids and the polyps which are known cancerous growths in the womb of the woman. So in our diagnostic we found that there were several endometrial polyps or the uterine folds inside the lining of her uterus. So at the moment when we get the information about the endometrial polyps we remove them and now she is performing well. these were mainly due to the increase in level of estrogen and the progesterone which mainly thickened her uterus linings hope you liked our video so please don't forget to subscribe our channel for further updates thank you